Monitoring pin activity by watching pins gets old pretty quick, so Universal Scan provides a bunch of virtual LEDs you can connect to the pins to help organize your work. Using LEDs is easy. Let's add a single LED to pin one's input buffer. I just grab the single LED, fill in the blanks, let's call it pin one. I can select the device in the chain I want to connect it to, in this case the first device. I can change the name of this if I want to. Connect it to whichever pin I want, in this case pin one is fine. I can change the color to whatever I want, we'll leave it at red. Uh, I can specify an LED or a latching LED. And most importantly, I can connect this LED to the input buffer, the output buffer, or the tri-state. In this case, I want the input buffer because that's what will tell me what the pin on the device is doing. And just that quick, we now have an LED which is tracking the pin on the device one for one. So now I could paint a column of LEDs here that's, let's say, the address bus, another column that's the data bus, and see at a glance if any of the lines are stuck high or stuck low and who's active and who isn't. Now I know from the schematic that pins 1 through 9 over here are used to drive the 7 segment on the board. So I'm going to select a 7 segment virtual LED, fill in the blanks. For each segment I need to specify a device. Again, I can change the name of those if I want to. A pin. The 7 segment is being driven by pins 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, and 8. I want to invert this display because it's a common anode device, and I want this to be hooked up to the input buffer of the device. That will tell me what the pins on the device are doing. I say OK, and just that quick, I can now view this pin activity in the form of a seven segment virtual display. Keep in mind, this is telling me what the pins on the Xilinx are doing. If this does not track the hardware on the board, then I know there's a problem between the pins and the board and that the Xilinx is functioning correctly. If this is not working correctly, not working as expected, well then either the hardware is messing up the pins on the part, you know, it's loading it down or something, or the Xilinx isn't working correctly. So the way I would look at that is I would bring up another seven segment display, fill in all the blanks exact same way as before, first device in the chain, same pins, except now I'm going to tell it I want to look at the output buffer. This is the signal driving the output buffer from inside the Xilinx. This will give me a look at what the Xilinx is trying to do to the pin, independent of what actually gets out of the device. I'm going to invert that, say OK. And here in this example, I can see these are tracking one for one. Let me change this. I'm going to label these so we can keep track of them. This is the output buffer, and this is the input buffer. So now I can see side by side what the input buffer and what the output buffer see on this particular pin. Again, if the input buffer and output buffer disagree, I know I have a hardware problem. If they're both wrong, then I know I have an internal logic problem. The other LEDs that are, av are available are the latching LED, the bar graph LED, very similar to a single LED, except now you can specify all eight segments at once. I'm not going to do that here. I will say OK. It puts up just a very compact format so you can view eight signals all at once. This is very handy for viewing buses and dip switches and things. You've already seen the seven segment in action. There's also a hexadecimal LED where you put in the four signals and it automatically decodes them and puts up a hexadecimal display. In fact, I know that pins 11, 12, 13, and 14 on this device, those four bits are showing you what the counter is doing that's driving the seven segment decoder in this device. So let's wire this seven segment up to those four pins. I think pin 14 is the, uh, the MSB. So we'll put that over here. Let's get the devices going. Pin 14, pin 13, pin 12, pin 11. I want to monitor what the pins are doing in this case and say OK. And sure enough, I can see that this four bit counter is tracking one for one with the output of the seven segment decoder. There's also a bulk add tool, this button up here, that allows you to generate lots of LEDs very quickly. As you can imagine, doing these one by one by hand is kind of hard. This bulk add tool allows you to add lots of LEDs very quickly and very efficiently. The key points in this video are that Universal Scan's virtual LEDs help you organize the information you want to monitor. 
and that you can monitor all three points of interest in an I.O. cell, the input buffer, the output buffer, and the tri-state control without affecting the operation of the circuit.